Good evening, everyone. Well, more than 1,100 people turned out for the various events that go along with the 5th Annual Marquette Marathon and Half Marathon. The full marathon runner started at the Cliffs Chef by Museum in Ishpeming at 730 this morning, and the rain definitely kept them cool and refreshed. Bib 120 Vince Bouchard of Rochester Hills, Michigan didn't take long before he was by himself on the Iron Ore Heritage Trail. And this aid station was in Nagani. About 275 people accepted the challenge of the marathon. However, the rain continued for most of the race. That was around the eight mile mark. Despite some fog, everyone had a chance to see a few sights along the Lake Superior shoreline by the 17 mile mark through 20 mile 21 when they arrived at Presque Isle Park. In the end, Brian Desmond of Ann Arbor would take second. He was not able to catch Vince Bassard, who crossed the finish line in just under two hours, 36 minutes. And what does it take to beat your competition by over three minutes? minutes. Well, he says confidence. You know, um, I wasn't really expecting a win. I was kind of really just hoping for it. Um, I realized right at the start of the run um, that really no one was around me. So I'm like, oh my God, I could probably win this thing. And you know, it's a mile, mile one. I'm like, easy. You got 25 miles to uh, to prove it. I knew that it was going to be really flat and downhill at the beginning and I expected people to go out really hard. After 16 miles, people started to fall off their pace and, and I was watching them and I was waiting so that's when I kind of attacked. That's Marquette's Christina Caradine. She was the first female finisher in the marathon. To the half marathon, Marquette's Tracy Locken absolutely smoked his competition, crossing the line in just one hour, 14 minutes, while another Marquette native, Melanie Bissigo, was the first female to cross the line 14 minutes later. Nearly 400 people participated in this race. To the 2014 Cabela's National Walleye Tour in Escanaba's Ludington Park. Today was the final day of fishing. Let's get to the weigh-ins. Now, early on, Escanaba's Jamie Turangio jumped down on top with a total of 41.9 pounds of fish. He'd finish in 11th place. Iron Mountain Stan Locke finished fifth with 46.22 pounds. But in the end, it came down to a pair of best friends to see who would be crowned this year's champion in Escanaba. Gary Parsons brought in five fish weighing 25.1 pounds for a total of 48.02 and a tentative lead, but day one leader Keith Kavias needed just 20 pounds to win. He gets 25 pounds and takes home the big score with 53.5 pounds of fish over his best friend, who also happens to be his brother-in-law. Gary and I have worked together on tournaments for a long, long time. Uh, we started fishing Pro-Am tournaments back in 1991, and from the day one, we always uh, shared information, share our spots, you know, talk over techniques. It's sweet that we came in one and two. We've been hoping to do that for a long time. It's been a while since we did it. We've done it before, so uh, it's a good deal. Now, what's also a good deal is the $15,000 first prize and boat he received. The National Walleye Tours next stop is Oshkosh. Wisconsin, September 18th.